Hey there guys, my name is Wakefield Trailhead and this is a review video of something which I purchased yesterday as of recording today. Now as of recording today, it is the 9th of February. Yesterday, I went to Doncaster Race Course for the, for the Model Railway Exhibition, which I believe is called the Festival of British Model Railway. Or something along those lines. Uh, but anyway, I went there, had a great time. I was telling myself, go for the rolling stock. Don't buy engines. But an engine at a great price. Come on, how the hell couldn't I? I tested her, she works great. And she's an old model. I won't put it off any longer. Because she's in here. First of all, look at that. That is a display case. And uh, this is how much I paid for it. £45. I mean, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. Um, this is, uh, well, I wouldn't say solid wood, but um, quite durable. Inside is uh, this foam here. You can see this foam. And this is the engine that we're going to be reviewing. It is a Class B1 by the LNER, and this was an LNER engine because um, well, it's British Railways now. Let's get her out. And this, as I can tell, that she's an old model. The tender coupling, look at that. It's a very, very old tender coupling. And the uh, the coupling right here is the same as the uh, Thomas and Friends system. I don't know if this was made in the USA. Might be made in China even. Um, oh, I've just noticed here. If the camera can pick it up, there's a water scoop. But we'll move on to the most exciting part first, and that is the engine. They are number 61018. GNU or new I can never pronounce that name right. I'm gonna call it GNU for now. Um I bet it is new, I don't know. Um GNU I believe is another name for a wildebeest. Um the class B ones, some of them were named after antelopes and uh, people such as AH Bibi was it AH Bibi or something Bibi? I know one was called Sir Harold Mitchell and uh yeah, the rest were named after antelopes. Now, a bit of history. Let me just couple up the tender. It's quite simple. There's a slot right here, and it just... There we go. Couldn't be more simpler. Now, here we go. Um, the uh, Class B ones were built by Edward Thompson. Um, boo hiss for his redesign of Gresley engines. But the B ones... I don't know if there were a rebuild of some engines or what, but they're some of my favourites from him. They are some of my favourites. The um, the B1s were an LNER design from 1942. I don't know when this one was built. In fact, um, whilst I'm talking about it, I'll have a look on the old iPad which I've got next to me. I got it as uh, looking at the shed code. The shed code on this is 50A, and 50A is York. And, um, and I shall also tell you when she was withdrawn. Um, let me just get onto the website first. Now, uh, 410 B1s were built, I can't remember if I said that. And they were a massive success. Withdrawals started in... Well, the first withdrawal... I believe happened with an accident in 1950 and the rest of the 409 were withdrawn in the 60s as you'd expect the last going in 1967 and two survive 61264 I think one's called survived she went to Barry being the only LNER engine to do so and is now preserved Works at the North Yorkshire Moors, I believe. And the other one 
six or one three six. No wait, that's six one three o oh, six. N name Mayflower. I'm gonna sound like a right idiot, aren't I? But yeah, I know for a fact that two have survived. Now let me just look up uh, six o oh, one o. Oh, 61018. Oh, I always get that number mixed up. And I don't mean to. But it's definitely 61018. Um, Alright, this one was built on the 4th of February 1947. So she was only just an LNER locomotive. And um, she was a York engine throughout her British Railways life and she was cut up in 1965 at Drapers of Hall so she hasn't had the longest life but she's not as short as Evening Star I mean for God's sake she lasted five years now let's disconnect the tinder now there's something that I don't see that often that's a driver you don't have a fireman but that's okay you can add. Because this is an older model, you don't have much detail in the cab. Um, I like how the driver's looking out of the window, actually looking out of the window. And uh, you can actually see him. The, the, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. And whilst we're on the front, here's the front. And a um, lamp there. If you were doing this realistically, you'd have this running either with a brake van or a light engine. That's the brake van for... No, that's the uh, lamp code for a light engine. I hope I haven't said... Uh, brake van all the time but here's the front the front looks a lot like a black 5 and, a, and I believe that they were the inspiration for them I know that they were classified as a 5MT so they could do uh, goods and passengers and we've got a wonky thing here yeah uh, 61018 right there my finger might have been in the way and 50A which is York for those who don't know if anyone's ever been inside the National Railway Museum, you see all the engines, Evening Star, Element Lines, um, who else is there, Load Star, all them, that was York Shed. So you can imagine way deep down until, in this engine's case, 1965, where this engine stayed. Absolutely incredible. Now the, now the detail on this is very basic, but I like it. It's an older model, and I appreciate it for what it is. And here's the Walshitz valve gear. Here's the close-up of... Um, well, you can read that. I'm not going to butcher up the name anymore that I need to. Um, a few marks there, but oh well. Don't matter. I don't know whether I did that or... There's the safety valves and the whistle. The uh, ca uh, the cover that would open and close, but this one doesn't. And of course, being an older model, you do not get spring buffers. Nope, ain't get a spring. And for those who and for those who don't know, you've heard you've heard the term B12. B17, but if you wonder what the B part is supposed to mean, you only have to look at the wheel arrangement. On the LNER, the B class had a 460 wheel arrangement. If it was a 462, it was an A class. If it was a 460, it was a B class. If it was a, oh god, let me see, um, 442, it was an Atlantic. J class. 060, Y class 040, and can I give, yeah one last, uh, pardon, pardon the dog barking, and one more classification, K, the K class is a 260, otherwise known as a mogul, but yeah that, these, um, even though they were new design, they were absolutely powerful, and you can see here, 
above the running number, 5MT, below the running number, route availability, 5. And these were go-anywhere-do-anything machines, just like the Black 5s. And, um, if I, I don't know whether I'll, well, know in my brain, if I don't upload it recent, recently, I'll do another one, a review on the Black 5, which I've got. And, uh, whilst, whilst I went to the race course, I also got a sound chip, fitted uh, sound chip in. I haven't seen any videos of that, I don't think. Well, certainly not a fitting one. It took me 15 bloody minutes doing that. Anyway, let's get that aside and have a closer look at the tender. Now, the one thing is blatantly obvious is the coal load is not removable and it's quite chunky. Look at that. But that does not bother me. You get a bit of detail right here. All sorts of moulded detail, some detail right here. And you also get a spilt coal load, which, yeah, brilliant. A bit more detail. You get the weight crest. And uh, the brake rigging has already been pre-fitted, and right here where my finger is, is the uh, water scoop. Now what that, what that enables to do, is when the engine is going along the line at speed, there may be some sections in, the, uh, in between the rails where water is. That's there for a reason. Now the water would go into the scoop and refill the engine from there. It saves the engine having to stop, refill with water, and go. The engine can just get water on the go. Um, also, as well as of the oh god, the um, the brake line snap. Well, not snap, fell off there. But oh well. Uh, you do not get sprung buffers, of course. The back has a bit of detail, not that much. I don't know if that's for oil. Uh, someone please tell me in the comment section what that's for. Um, underneath is pretty simple and it's pretty lightweight. Um, except for the little tiny magnet. Yeah, sorry, wait, that's in there. In here is information, and this is actually a limited edition model. Uh, that's a card for something else. Here is the exploded diagram, and... Um, this is really, really useful if one of your parts breaks. You see the part, you think, oh no, the the uh, oh, um, uh, valve gear is broken. So I look at valve gear, and if the camera will focus, the the number looks to be seven hundred dash one one zero L. What the hell's that? You're just looking at it from the eye. Oh L, yeah. Yeah, so this has different codes, and uh, you can contact Backman and see if they have any... But of course, Backman have retooled their B1s quite a while ago. Um, during this time, there were others you can get. There was a 71... Uh, there was 701A-100 Black 5. No, BR Black version. Uh, 61399. Six uh, that one... 61 uh, sorry 61190 wildebeest 61010 and lnr green mayflower yeah 1306 and i just spat all over the camera screen because i'm a bit of a doofus let's just put this carefully away and let's have a look at the certificate um, one of a hundred pieces so this is quite a rare model one of a hundred pieces specially produced by Backman Industries Europe Limited um, exclusively uh, exclusively produced for the United States of America which is where the comedy first originated from and this is number 87 so it's quite high but as a but as I've already said this is a rare model and I say, old on you, if you get a limited edition model, get it. I urge you to get one. So that was the review on the Class B1. I rate her an 8 out of 10 because she's not DCC fitted already. There's no way you can get a chip in her. She's not as good as the runner as a, 
Hornby or later B ones are. Hornby or Backman, sorry. There are some mark. There are some finger marks on it, but I don't know if that were me or somebody else. I don't know, but I can't fault it for that. Um, the one thing, sorry, the two things I really like about this model is the head co uh, is the lamp and the driver. They're two things that I really, really like, and um, I shall see you next time for another video. Thank you for watching, be sure, to, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you next time.